Do you ever feel like things are so dark in your life that God isn't working? You can't see him working. You can't feel him working. And you don't even know if he's there anymore. Listen to this by Ron Mel, God Works in the Night Shift, pages 26 and 27. The little study demonstrated that the time of wrestling and fighting through the walls of the cocoon actually gives the wings of the butterfly the strength to take to the air. The very struggle, all of the pushing and thrashing of the insect to free itself from restraint is what makes its new life possible. Without that strife, there is no strength. Most of us can identify with those dark periods of struggle. We find ourselves weary and frustrated and confined. We get tired of fighting and toiling and wonder what God's about in our lives. It's about that time when we're in the middle of some painful perplexity or shattering disappointment that some well-intentioned fellow Christian comes along us and whispers a certain verse of scripture in our ear. Can you guess what verse I might be referring to? Usually what they whisper is my least favorite verse in the Bible, Romans 8:28. I'd hazard a guess that you've had it quoted to you a few times too. And we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Frankly, I don't want to hear that verse when I'm in pain. I don't want to hear that verse when I'm grieving. I don't want to hear that verse when circumstances pull the rug out from under me and leave me dazed and disoriented on my backside. The truth is, and stay with me here, Romans 8.28 is only half a thought. Romans 8.28 isn't that much help or encouragement unless you link it with the other half of the thought, Romans 8.29. The very reason for verse 28 is verse 29. Yes, all things do work together, as long as you know what that work is for. Yes, we're called according to his purpose, but what is that purpose? Verse 29 makes it clear. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, what is God working at in my life? What's God up to in your life? He's up to one thing, and only one thing. He's making you and me more like his son, period. He's not up to five things or 15 things or 27 things. His purpose is not to make me a better preacher. His purpose is not to make you a better dad or mom, wife or husband, son or daughter. His purpose is not to transform you into the world's best secretary or copper teacher or bricklayer or brain surgeon. He's not working in the dark to give you position and prosperity and peace. He's bending his power and his will to one purpose. And that is conforming you and me, his adopted children, to the image of the Lord Jesus. Now, he may be pleased and delighted to help you become a wonderful mom or dad or doctor or basketball player or Sunday school teacher, but that's not what he's about. His great objective in your life, the reason he leaves you on earth, is to make you more and more like the eternal son of God. Otherwise, why wouldn't he shoot us a quick ticket home to heaven as soon as we receive salvation in Christ? Why wouldn't he save us the heartache and pain? He wants us to become mature in Christ, full and complete. So when you're going through such a painful time in your life, such a dark moment, remember, he's conforming you, making you, turning you into the image of his son. Ron Mel also puts it this way, that you are the canvas, the paint and brushes are your trials and pain, the portrait is his son.